John chapter 4. Uh, for the, anybody who knows a little bit about John, you know that chapter 4 is the story of the woman at the well. Jesus meets a woman who has had five failed marriages, and she now finds herself in an entanglement that uh, Jesus confronts her about. And uh, she didn't know that she was having a meeting with the cycle breaker. She was stuck in a cycle going around and around and around. But God was there to break the cycle. It's a fascinating narrative. It takes about 38 verses to complete it uh, from chapter 4, verse 4 to uh, about 42. It takes about 38 verses. And I love the Bible. And as I was preparing, I felt like we should read all the verses. Don't you love the Bible? Come on, man. We need the Word of God. Man, may this generation fall in love with the Word of God again. We need the Word of God. How can you love God and not love His Word? The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Did you know the Bible did not begin at canonization? That's just when it became readable. The word was here before we got here. It'll be here when we leave. It's the truth. It'll always be the truth, and we need the word of God. However, when I was preparing this message, I thought I was going to read all 38 verses, and the Lord spoke to me and said, Travis, all it takes is one. <laughs> so I'm going to read from the fourth gospel, the fourth chapter, the fourth verse. And it reads like this. But he needed to go through Samaria. But... He needed to go through Samaria, but he needed to go through Samaria. I have a master's in theology, and I'm currently uh, getting my PhD, so I know some different places to find some information. Uh, so I went to a source called uh, ChatGPT, and I... <laughs> I asked the spirit of AI, I said, <laughs> I said, but did he really have to go through Samaria? And Chad said, actually, no. He said, there were several ways to get from Galilee to Judea. As a matter of fact, most Jews would avoid Samaria because there was cultural and racial tension at the time. They'd rather cross the Jordan to get where they needed to go, but he needed to go through. Samaria. Ladies and gentlemen, I got a word from God that I believe is going to change your life, and I need you to help me preach. This message is called, God's been looking for you. Would you do me a favor? Turn and tell five people, God's been looking for you. God's been looking for you. God's been looking. God's been looking. God's been looking for in the balcony. God's been looking for you're not late he's looking for you you're not behind he's looking for you Woo. you're not forgotten he's looking for you. you've been hiding he's looking for you you've been hurting he's looking for you you've been a little bitter but he's still been looking for you divorced he's looking for you molested he's looking for you i wish you'll turn to somebody he's still looking he's still looking he's st god's been looking for you spirit of the living god I thank you that you're already here. Woo, I feel your win. God, I thank you that you've divinely orchestrated this moment like you did with the woman at the well. God, I'm standing on the stage that's been built over 20 years ago, built on the backs of faithfulness, built by the hands of integrity. This stage was ready before this man was ready. And God, that's just the way you operate. I thank you that you've been preparing us for a prepared place. The Spirit of the living God, breathe in this room like you never have before. I thank you that healing will take place in this room. I thank you that broken marriages will be mended in this room. I thank you that this is a therapy session like the woman at the well. Speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit, do a new thing in Jesus' name. If you're, only if you're excited for the Word of God, give them a good praise up in Dallas, Texas. Come on, I feel the wind. Give him a good praise in this room. God's been looking for you. 
God's been looking for you. Go ahead and take your seats. God's been looking. God's been looking for you. God's been looking for you. God's been looking for you. And I love my God because he knows just when, how, and where to find you. God will find you when you're minding your business out for at Super Walmart. God will find you in the frat house homecoming weekend. God will find you in the crack house. God will find you on the corner. God will find you in the club dropping it like it's H-O-T. God will snatch you up. God will find you 7 o'clock on the dot in your drop top cruising the streets. God will usher your behind back into his marvelous light. God knows just where to find you when his hand is on you. God can find you. And I don't know where you were when he found you. But is there anybody up in this church that ain't too sedity to remember? <laughs> I'm just glad he didn't leave me where he found me. Child, if you knew my story, you wouldn't judge my praise. You've been looking at me funny all day, but if you knew the hell I've been through, you would help me praise him too. God found me and God kept me. He's a God who will come looking for you. God's been looking for you. I feel them. God's been looking for you. Prophetically, I want to declare that this is your day to come out of hiding. This is what I feel. I feel like you've been too polite and you've been trying to suppress your oil to be accepted by people who didn't call you. Come on. You, you've been trying to fit in and get people not to be offended or caught off guard because you're anointed. But I came with good news. You didn't give yourself the anointing. My God, he's the God who gave it to you. He's been looking for the real you, not the fake you, not the phone of you, not the you that you feel people can manage or tolerate. He's looking for the real, well, the real Slim Shady. Please stand up. Please stand up. God been looking for you. He put something on the inside of you. There's an investment that he's putting a demand back on. The Bible says in Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Set you apart, gave you an anointing. I appointed you. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, before you had a name, you had an assignment. Before you had breath, you and God had an agreement. And that's the version God's looking for. That's why he won't leave you alone. Aren't you glad he won't leave you alone? God will come bothering you, big on you because he's looking for what he placed on the inside of you. Tell somebody, God's been looking for you. I got, I got three boys. My wife call them energetic. I call them bad. And my mama here, I'm probably reaping what I sowed. I wasn't, I wasn't the most behaved child. They're four, seven, and nine. And uh, they like to play a little game that Adam made up called hide and seek. Where are you, Adam? You know that God is omnipresent, right? So when God asked where he was, he wasn't talking about where he was just physically. Where he was emotionally, psychologically. My son played his game hide and seek, and um, my four-year-old is probably the worst at it by far because he just makes all kind of noise when he's hiding. <laughs> like, it's as if he doesn't understand the concept of the game. So he'll get like in a closet and he'll never find me here. Son, I hear you. <laughs> but because I'm a good, good father, that's who I am. I, I play along with him. And so I'll, I'll walk around like, oh, where, oh, where could he be? I'll never be able to find old John John. And he's hiding. And um, because I, I love him, I, I play with him and I pretend as if I'm looking for him. And I know we got a lot of peas that we call God. He's powerful and he's a protector and he's a provider. But God is also patient. He's so patient. Watch this. I play with my son and act like I'm looking for him until he gets tired of playing. So when I say God is looking for you, it's not because he doesn't know where you are. It's because he's just patient enough to let you get tired of playing. Woo. 
playing church, playing games, playing like you got. And I'm so glad for churches like the Potter's House. This church is full of people. I didn't come to play around. I didn't come to impress nobody. I didn't come so that you could see my outfit. I didn't come to play no games. Ladies and gentlemen, it reminds me of the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son got tired of playing. The Bible says when he came to himself, <laughs> he said, wait a minute now. I'm out here with pigs. He said, the, sir, the help got, got it better than me. He said, I'm going to go back to the crib and tell my daddy, look, man, I'm sorry. But the Bible says why he was afar off. The father came running to him. Well, how did the father come running to him? Could it be he was already on the porch and the father was looking for him? Why was the father looking for him, Travis? It's because the father knew he would return. How did the father know he would return? Because the father had confidence in himself. Watch me. The father knew that what he instilled in the boy was too good to be wasted. God said, there's no word that can return to him. Boy, God is confident in God. Oh, my God. So when, he, when he's looking, it's because he knows that you're going to return. This is why the Bible says, watch this, God is Alpha and Omega. This means that he stands outside of time. Watch me. This means that while he's anointing the shepherd boy David with oil, at the same time, he sees the bath water being poured for Bathsheba. Oh, yeah, this is rubbing all your religious. I, I, feel, I feel the tension. You're like, wait a minute. I don't like that. He sees the affair because God doesn't see past, present, or future. He stands outside of time. So he's monitoring it and seeing oil be poured and seeing bath water be poured for future adultery and does not stop the oil. Why didn't he stop the oil? I'm glad you asked. Because he knew the oil wouldn't be wasted. He knew that a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. He knew that eventually David would turn around and say, oh God, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Take anything. Don't take your presence. He knew that his confidence was in himself. God is confident, and I am confident in this very thing, that he who has begun a good work is faithful to complete it. God is confident in God. The son was tired of playing games, and it reminds me of the woman at the well. She's tired of playing games. She's tired of giving her heart to men that can't manage it. I think nowadays they call them sugar daddies. That can pay her bills but leave her emotionally bankrupt. She's tired of playing games. She needs a real encounter. Woo, that's why you came to church today. You need a real encounter. And she meets a man who's a little different. Anybody know the man named Jesus? The woman is tired. She comes to the well, but she's tired of pretending like she's well. And she finds herself, like many of us, in a deficit because of the life she's in. She keeps digging a hole deeper and deeper. Every relationship takes her deeper and deeper. Trauma digging deeper and deeper and deeper. And now the hole in her soul is too deep for her to manage herself. The danger, ladies and gentlemen, of digging holes is that the place of escape eventually becomes a trap. And the pit becomes a prison. <laughs> and we often talk about our haters. We often talk about the pits that Joseph brothers put him in. But let's talk a moment about the pits we put ourselves in. <laughs> when life causes us to pull our shovel out and dig a pit that we can't get out of, I'm so glad the good news is we serve a God who will pick you out of the pit. My God. My grandma used to say, if you have to reach way down, Jesus, I'm a country boy, Jesus will pick you up. Is there anybody who glad that God picked you out of your self-made pit? He'll pick you out. He'll pick you out like you picked out a guy in the Bible named Abraham. Abraham was picked out because God was looking for him. Genesis 12 says, go to a land that I will show you. The Bible says he goes to the land of Canaan. There's Canaanites everywhere. And the Bible says he parks at a place called Shechem. 
and he parts at Shechem, and then he goes to Beersheba and digs a well. And they, uh, uh, Abraham would go around digging wells. It's something that he would do and something that he passed down from generation. He would dig wells, but Abraham sometimes didn't dig well. Ah, uh, you know the story. Abraham thought that maybe he should help God out. And so he said, well, well, wife old, maybe I should get with, you know, side chick. God with her and try to give God a son that God didn't ask for. Whew. Just because it's available doesn't mean it's God's choice. God wasn't looking for Ishmael. God was looking for Isaac. And now here comes Isaac. Watch how it passed down. And Isaac favors Esau. And the Bible says Jacob came dressed like Esau to get the blessings of Isaac. Isaac was looking for Esau. God was looking for Jacob. And I like Jacob because Jacob was a trickster. He would go around getting in trouble, but God still had his eyes on him. Because when God is looking for you, it doesn't matter who looks over you. My God. And this is this woman, ladies and gentlemen, this woman has no idea she's about to be picked out by God. She comes to the well, she has no idea that God is about to pick out what man picked over. Because God looks at leftovers like we do in South Carolina. I don't know how y'all do food in Dallas. But in South Carolina, it ain't good until it... I don't want no fresh spaghetti. I need it the next day when they had time for the, the seasoning to get in, in the noodle. It take a night weeping and do it for a night. It take a night for the seasoning to really. <laughs> and this woman felt like a leftover, but she didn't know God was allowing her seasons to season her. And could it be that God has allowed you to go through the things you've gone through in order to add the necessary flavor to your life? You wouldn't have the anointing if you didn't go through the affliction. Come on up in here. You wouldn't even have the ministry if you didn't have your history. God is a God who allowed people to look over you so he can pick you out. And that was this woman. That, the Bible says it like this. It says that he is a God who calls all things to work together for the good. He knows how to make leftovers work. I like to call him Chef Jesus. He'll get in the kitchen and he'll put that thing. He'll take what the enemy meant for evil and he'll work it together. He'll take the haters. He'll, he'll allow the, the rumors to start and he'll, he'll allow the betrayals to start and he'll work it together and next thing you know you come out powerful. Next thing you know you come out wiser. Next thing you know you come out with favor. That was this woman. Chef Jesus was up to work. This is why the disciples came back and said, ain't you hungry, man? You been gone all day. And God said, no, sir, I'm not hungry. I've been in the kitchen. I got food you don't know of. I've been working this thing together and I don't know who I'm talking to in this room, but people have looked over you. People haven't seen your value, David. Everybody was invited but you, but God says, I'm a God who will take you from the back, from the balcony to the floor. I'm the God who will bring you from the back of the line to the front of the line. When my eyes are on you, God's been looking for you. What I'm really trying to tell you is get ready get ready get ready because God your name is about to come up I wish you will find seven people and tell them your name is about to come up come on tell them take a good look at me right now as a matter of fact take a selfie with me because this the brokest you ever going to see me this the lowest you ever going to see me this the loneliest you ever going to see me God's been cooking something together so here's the woman here's the woman here's the woman She's going to the well alone at noon. That's like 1992 going to the Dallas Cowboys game to see Michael Irvin by yourself. You don't go to a game by yourself? 
this woman is by herself. God, she didn't fit in with the real housewives of Samaria. She didn't fit in with nobody. She by herself going to the well, pretending to be well. She by herself. She don't fit in with the Samaritans. Watch this. She don't fit in with the Jews. She's stuck. Hiding in her own hometown. What happens when you're lost at home? Just give me a second to work this right here. What happens when you're lost in the house? That's what I really came to preach about. Lost in the house. Would you do me a favor? Hit somebody tell me, don't be, don't be lost in the house. Something happened at our church recently. Um, God has blessed us. We're about to turn eight years old. And uh, yeah, man, I'm so proud of what God's done. Last time I was here, we didn't even start the church yet. Um, I was here with a guitar the last time I was here. And now I'm back and uh, God has blessed our church. And we recently did something. We had a... Uh, a meeting, if you will, with some of the people who've been with us for a while. We wanted to get to know how can we serve you better. And unfortunately, there was a lot of young people there. And young people, they always got an opinion. Don't, ain't that the truth? <laughs> you ain't even live long enough to be offended. How you offended? You ain't, you ain't got no kids that you offended. You ain't got no real bills. How you? Some of the young people were speaking up. I wish we did this, and I miss the good old days. Child, we ain't even eight. It ain't no good old days. We... <laughs> so this opinionated. Finally, this older woman. You need some seasoned saints. This older woman. Yeah, Lord. This older. What my seasoned saints? You've been with the Lord for a while. This older woman slapped the table. She said, "Enough." Bishop, she said, where's the lost? Where's the lost? My chief of staff started crying. She said, yes, thank you. She said, where's the lost? The lost and found because I lost my bracelet and and they told me to go to the merch area, but I can't find it. Where's the lost? <laughs> she said, <laughs> You know I can't make this up. She said, my friend lost her Bible, and she's Caucasian. <laughs> Ma'am, that's the most irrelevant information. <laughs> oh, God, she's Caucasian. We got to find this Bible. <laughs> Where's the lost? <laughs> Jesus told stories, and there's a story, a couple stories in Luke 15. Powerful stories. One is of a woman. Just like this lady in our church who, she lost her coin. The Bible says she looked throughout the whole house. She lit the lamp and she finally found the coin. The Bible says she called all her neighbors and said, come over, we're throwing a party. I finally found my coin. He goes from that story and starts talking about another story that is really parallel. The story of a lost son called the, par the, the prodigal son. And many of us think the story is about the son who's lost in the streets. The story is actually about the son who's lost in the house, <laughs> that you're this close to proximity and you don't understand that proximity is prophetic, that God, if God has you in a house like this and obviously there's something on you, this son overlooked the blessing of covering, he forgot, he mad that the daddy throwing the brother a party, he forgot, but son you can throw your own party, oh my God, where, where are my people in the room that said I don't need nobody to recognize me, I can throw my own party, I don't need a, par a special parking space, I don't even need a title, I know that I got an anointing on my life, he's in the house but he's lost in the house. He's lost in the house. It's another story in 2 Kings chapter 4, one of my favorite stories in the Bible because it reminds me of my mother. It reminds me of my mother because my dad died when I was five. He was a 28-year-old pastor. He died of, of an aneurysm on a Sunday morning in 1989. My mother raised me and my two sisters are here all by herself. Um, a phenomenal woman, put us all through college. She's an amazing woman. And, and in this story, there's a widow and the widow comes running to the prophet Elisha. She says, she says, my husband is gone. He ran with the company of prophets. He didn't have any life insurance. She said, I'm about to lose my sons. 
because I don't have money to pay the debt. And the prophet is so insensitive because he didn't ask her for her cash app. <laughs> he didn't say go to pottershouse.org slash benevolence. <laughs> he looked her in the eyes and said, woman, what do you have left in your house? The woman scratched her head and said, I don't have nothing except a small jar of olive oil. In my sanctified imagination, I imagine Elisha started smiling and said, of all the things you got left, you still got all? I need 500 people that say, I don't have a lot of stuff, but baby, I still got, I still got all. Come on, I wish I had some people that from the 90s that really knew how to praise God. I still got all. I might not have a lot of money, but I got all. I may not have gotten the promotion I deserve, but I got all. He might have left me, she might have left me, but I still got I still got Oh. So, now there's many ways to preach this text and there's so, so many revelations in it, but I want to share one with you. The miracle wasn't just the fact that the oil started overflowing. That, she didn't shout about that. She shouted about the fact that she didn't lose her sons. And she almost lost her sons to the streets. Hear me, because she forgot she had all. And the Lord told me to come to Dallas, Texas and tell a few people, go back and find the oil. I wish you would grab somebody, tell them, find the oil, find the oil, find the oil. After my dad died, I got in a lot of trouble, Pastor Don. I got in a ton of trouble. I had a bunch of behavior issues and my God, they had my mama number on speed dial. I mean, from the 80s and 90s when they, they could pop you at school back then. Y'all yeah, don't know nothing about that. That's what's wrong with these kids now. They need to be slapped just a little bit. I know you do your soft parenting, Pastor Terry. I hear you gentle, gentle. You try gentle on my three sons. They will run you crazy. You just, every, at least pretend like. My mama used to threaten us. I'm going to back slap you. It ain't never really happened, but we just. I got in a lot of trouble, and the, the counselor diagnosed me with all kind of stuff. And I, I'm so glad my mother knew where to find the oil. <laughs> she wasn't intrusive. She'll wait till I was asleep. I'd be dreaming about the cowboys and wake up drowning in oil. What is? And I just wish we had some people that knew you didn't, you don't really have to know your Greek and Hebrew to run some demons out. Really, all you got to be able to say is two words, the blood, the blood, the blood, the, the blood, the blood, the blood, I wish I had some old school, the blood, the blood, the blood, the, blood. the devil know what that means, the blood, even if your children don't know what it means, the blood, the blood. Recently. My son, my, my son started getting some trouble in school, academically, socially. He just, man, he was going through a lot. And uh, it was running my wife, I mean, crazy. And so she was doing everything. She met with all the counselors and met with doctors and they prescribed stuff and did all kind of stuff. And, and a couple of weeks ago, Bishop, we were, we were driving, we were on a date. And I leaned over and I said, man, it seems like our son's been doing well. It just seems like you've been, you've been a lot chill, like you haven't been complaining about it. She looked at me, she said, oh, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> Y'all excuse me, I'm about to take off running. She said, I forgot to tell you, while you was out of town, you know, doing your little thing, you know, traveling and stuff. She said, one night I was up praying. She said, and God said, Jackie, go find the oil. 
She said, while he was asleep, I got the oil and I went in his room and I just went up. She said, all I had to do was pray in the spirit over him and God changed everything about him. I wish you would find five people and tell them, go back and find the oil. I'm not against therapy, but find the oil. I, I pray God for doctors and medication, but you gotta find the oil. Don't lose the oil in the house. Don't lose the oil in the house. We gotta get the oil again. The only way we won't lose our sons is if we find the oil. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds right there to give God a praise for your children, your children's children. The oil won't be lost in my house. As for me and my house, as for the Greens, as for the Jakes, as for the Roberts, we know where to find the oil. I wish I had a church that knew how to praise God. And so, and so she, and so she, I'm done. The woman thought she was going to the well. She was going to meet a man who was looking for her to remind her that, baby girl, you still have value. And I know some things failed in your life, but you still got all. And I don't know who need to be reminded of that. You feel like what has happened in your life has robbed you of your all. If only I was there for my kids. If only I could redo this. God says, no, 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 no. You still got all. And I love this story. I love this story for several reasons. But something interesting also happens in the story. I got to show you one more thing. He needed to go through. He needed to go through. So Mary, I asked the book questions. I said, why, why did you need to? He said, I told you, I'm not just alpha. I'm omega. I had to go back to finish what I started. Just give me five minutes. I'm about to lose my cool. I don't know how y'all do this every week. It's so much anointing up here. Good God all the mighty. He said, I'm not just alpha, I'm omega. That means your future is his past. That means wherever you're headed, he's already been. That means you've never faced a problem that he hadn't already made provision for. The Bible calls him, Ezekiel coined this term, Jehovah Shammah. Would you say that with me? Shammah. What this word means is that he is a present help. Only if you're 40 or older, you know what I'm talking about. Anybody know him to be a present? I used to say 30 or older, but I'm 40 now, so I can. Present help. But not only is he a present help, he himself is the present. (laughs) The reward of worship is his presence. So when he shows up, I get everything I need. He's a present help. He's the present. Now watch this. If you break this word present up, it also means pre-sent. Would you say that with me? Pre-sent. Pre-sent. Provision pre-sent. Protection pre-sent. He's a pre-sent Help. The Bible has a story of a man named Jonah who gets thrown off a well. I mean, thrown off a ship. 
but a well is there. The well was preset. The well was literally created to be in the right place at the right time and to become a hotel for Jonah. The well was preset. <laughs> the well, with Bishop's already there, the well was preset. Not only that, the Bible is full of these kind of stories. There's another story that I love that Jesus is taking a nap on a boat. How you taking a nap in a tsunami? And disciples come and wake him up like, dog, we about to die. And Jesus wakes up annoyed and he speaks to the storm nonchalantly. Even when Jesus is annoyed, he's powerful. And he says, peace, be still. But he's upset at the disciples because before they got on the boat, he said, let us go to the other side. The disciples thought he was talking to them. But because he's Alpha and Omega, he wasn't talking to the disciples. He was talking to the storm that he knew what was coming. And the reason he went to sleep is because he knew he could rest and allow his word to do the work. His word was preset. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have time to be anxious. You don't even have time to give to worry. You don't have time to walk around scared and stressed out because the word of God has been preset. Watch the Bible. Watch the Bible. Watch the Bible. The Bible says in John 4 that it's Jacob's well in a place called Sakar. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Sakar in the Old Testament is Shechem. Jacob and Esau got some beef. Jacob goes on a run for at least 20 years. Eventually, they have a reunion. They leave the family reunion. You'll never believe what happens. Jacob goes to Shechem and says, you know what? I'm going to buy some land right here and raise my family. One day, Jacob wakes up and said, I'm tired of going across the street to get water from their well. So Jacob says, I'm going to pull my shovel out and I'm going to start digging. Jacob digs a well. 2,000 years later, what was a well for Jacob was a seat. I got it from Bishop. So the well could sit on the well and the woman can finally get made well. Did you hear what I just said? God is a preset. I wish you would grab your neighbor and tell him God is a preset. Help. He's been working this thing out before you even got here. He's been setting you up. He is the ancient of death from generation to generation. Great is his faithfulness. God has been setting you up for an encounter. He prepared a seat 2,000 years before there would be a woman that would need a therapy session. The woman that no one wanted to walk with, Jesus chose to sit with and have a one-on-one -on -one with God. God's been looking for you. There's only a few people in Scripture that the Bible tells us Jesus had a one-on-one -on -one encounter with. <laughs> only a few. Nicodemus, Zacchaeus, the rich young ruler, the woman caught in adultery, the woman at the well. A one-on-one. -on -one with Could it be that man's rejection was a setup? For an encounter, Woo. their rejection set her up for God's invitation. Woo. Can I tell you something? God has been setting this thing up all along, and you are about to have a, I wish you'll lift your hands. You're about to have a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus himself. The old folks didn't say, just a little talk with Jesus.